Score study is an essential part of an education for a composer and orchestrator. And if you're not studying scores, you're not growing. But what is it? And how do you do it? Well, I'll show you how I do it. Why score study? Score studying, as I define it, is the act of reading a score and analyzing some part of it to learn some attribute like orchestration, harmony, voice leading, voicings, uh, counterpoint, texture, form, etc. You can then use the techniques that you pick up and apply them to your own music when you're writing. Over time, this develops your sensibilities when it comes to pairing instruments together, how to develop motifs, etc. What to study? Before you study anything, you have to find something to actually study. And what I recommend you do is to just start with something that you're familiar with and that you actually like. Now, if you feel like you need a bit more of a pedagogical approach, I have several videos on the channel for what to study if you're a beginner, an intermediate reader, or even an advanced reader. There are a total of 15 scores over those videos that will take you years to really ingest. So check out those videos for scores that I recommend you study. I think that's a good place to begin. How to study. Now to the question at hand, how do you actually study a score? Firstly, you need to consider what your goal is. If you're not just reading along to a recording with the score in hand, which is also a pretty good exercise to do as well, then it's worth having a specific goal, just like if you were to have a practice session for your instrument. So consider what category of music to study. Do you want to analyze the harmony of a piece, both up and down the entire score and how the harmony progresses? How about the instrumentation? How a composer pairs different instruments together and most importantly, why? Is it a combination of all of these things. I'm going to talk about a few categories of study that I tend to look for when I'm looking at a new piece or even a piece that I know really well, though you can pour over a ton of different musical details in each of these categories and that's up to you to decide. So let's start with studying harmony. So if you're trying to study the harmony of a piece, something you can try is distilling the harmony of all the instruments down together on one line or a couple of lines. And something I've done before is to create a condensed score either on paper or in notation software, all the instruments together on one chord with the sole intention of seeing all of the notes condensed down to a single line. So that way you can specifically see how the harmony moves from one chord to the next including voice leading, are there any jumps, as well as the harmonic rhythm or when the harmony moves. There are some great videos here on YouTube that you can find that have some wonderful reductions and analyses of classical and film scores. And I highly suggest that you check them out to see how they're put together. But I highly suggest that you do this yourself. It doesn't have to be a whole piece. It can be just eight measures, but the act of distilling every single note down, transposing everything yourself from one chord to the next really makes you see everything in much more detail than if you were to read off of something that someone else made. There's also a technique that I heard the legendary composition teacher Nadia Boulanger used with some of her students, and that's the act of copying an entire score by hand, line by line, and then transposing the entire piece again by a step writing it out. This really forces a student to look at a score at a microscopic level and see what's actually going on. I've never tried that myself, but maybe someday I will and I'll make a YouTube video about it. So hey, subscribe for that. You can also try reducing the music in real time at a piano, reading and transposing all the parts to just a few lines, assuming that it's not too difficult to get all the parts out on the piano with two hands. I've done this before and it's actually a really great exercise for reading and getting better at looking at several different lines and transposing parts in real time. Although admittedly, it is very frustrating at first. Orchestration. When I study an orchestral score, one of the main things I look at is the orchestration or how all of the instruments are put together to make up the whole. So firstly, and depending on the kind of music that it is, of course, I'll distill down the different parts to melody, harmony, bass line, texture, and whatnot. So I'll look at if some instruments are playing the melody and if they're in unison or if they're in octaves and why. Is the counterline to the melody in unison or in octaves and why? What instruments are playing the bass line and why? I look at what instruments are playing the harmony, either sustained or in some kind of rhythm or texture. Something that I'll do is I'll highlight each of these different roles with a different color on an orchestral page. Sometimes it can be really intimidating looking at a full orchestral score, seeing all of these different lines and instruments and all the ink on the page. 
page. But more often than not, if you break it down to just a few of these different roles, you'll see that there are only so many ideas that are going on at a time. And just like the harmony exercise, you can distill all of these down to just a few staves in a score reduction. That way you can sort of see what instruments are in the extreme high register, the strings, the high woodwinds, how much movement and texture there is going on. And if that is with the violas or clarinets, so it's a little lighter. So it's still present, but not overtaking the main ideas. So usually I'll highlight melody or the soprano voice in yellow, alto voice in blue, tenor voices in green, and then the bass line in purple. You can look at functions such as texture, color, balance, how different instruments interact with each other when it comes to their harmonics, the tessitura, or how different instruments sound different in different parts of their ranges, specific tone, how one note sounds different to several different instruments in the orchestra. And you can look at mass, are all of the instruments that are playing together there for color or is it just making a line stronger? Another part of this is why these instruments are specifically put together. For example, if you're looking at a bass line, it might be played by cellos and basses and octaves, which is very common in orchestral writing. After a few measures, the rhythm changes to something short and rhythmic. Now, bassoons are introduced in octaves in unison with the cellos and basses. Now, why would a composer do that? So firstly, consider the character of a bassoon in its low range. It becomes dark, reedy, almost barky and bitey. So you can reverse engineer the decision that the composer made to add the bassoons in that moment because they wanted to emphasize the articulation and bite of the bass line. So they added the bassoons to the cellos and basses that might have a little bit more of a softer start to all of their notes. And this is utilizing the low, barky, bitey, reedy quality of the low bassoon. There's an example of something that you might've learned that you can apply to your own orchestral writing, form. One of the last things I look at is the form of a piece. Form is all about how the piece itself is constructed. And the way I look at it, that includes the minute details of how to structure phrases, two bar phrases, four bar phrases, uh, periods, sentences, so larger sections like introduction, developments, recapitulation, endings, and such. This also, I think, includes the previous two categories of harmony and orchestration. How does the orchestration change as the piece develops? Does it become thicker? Does the same material get placed onto different instruments? Why does it increase in mass or is there a new color that's being introduced that hasn't been explored yet in the piece? Or does the harmony get more complex as the piece progresses? Are there key changes? Why are there specific moments when there are key changes? Is it because the material is becoming too repetitive? Now we're going in a different direction. Does similar material from before get reharmonized? How does that happen? And what using theory can you use to sort of justify that? Form to me is a marker of pacing, development, the structure of a piece or even the lack thereof. When to study. If you wanna start taking score studies seriously, if you wanna get better, then I highly suggest starting off with dedicating a few days out of the week to sitting down, score in hand with a recording and take an hour to study. If you really wanna get good at this, you have to practice it like anything else. So it's worth trying a few days out of the week, every other day, every day if you can manage it. What I did when I first started studying scores was studying most days out of the week, but eventually I settled on the day of Sunday being the best day for me to study. I just didn't have a lot going on that day, so I would take my iPad, pair of headphones, sit on the couch, sit on a chair, sit on my bed, and read and listen through a score and analyze it. By the way, if you wanna know what app I was using to study all those scores and the one that I recommend you use if you're gonna be using an iPad, then check out this video where I went over exactly that topic. I also have a video on some tips on how to study more often, so go and check that out if that seems like it's of interest to you. Also, making content on score study is something that I do here on this channel, so subscribe so you don't miss more content like this on score study. Lastly, I have a Notion template where I log what I study and what I pick up looking at all of these scores so that I don't forget anything that I'd really like to remember. It has a database where you can plot all of your study sessions, what you look at during those sessions, what you want to remember, what's important. And it also includes a dictionary of terms that might be helpful if you're looking at orchestral scores that might be in different languages. So the instrument names in several different European languages, names of special techniques for instruments, etc. So if you want the template for yourself, I make it available at ernestocomposer.com slash templates and it's made available for score level patrons over on Patreon. So go and check that out if you're interested. That's all I have for you today. 
Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so very much for watching. And as always, take care.